the play was going to cut your face. Connor has the puck. Made a great shot. One to Rebecca. Rebecca score. There it is. All the puck. It's the first score of the And welcome back to an all-new Black Red Blitz. As always, I'm your host, Rebecca Karen. Well, there are plenty of exciting highlights ahead, so let's get started. Coming off an absolute blowout victory over Framingham last Friday, girls basketball would look to pick apart yet another Bay State Conference victim, I mean opponent, here on Tuesday night. Standing in at 14-2, owning the number one spot in the Herget, the Raiders would waste no time in dominating the Dedham Marauders as well. Wellesley wins the opening tip-off. Leo Sperling brings the ball up court, looks up, and sees Kelsey Zaro. Zaro in the paint, takes the pass inside, easily banks it in for two. Well, that took six seconds. Full court defense, Nicole Beckett style. Beckett ripping the ball away and lays it in. Four insanely quick points scored here by the Raiders in just 22 seconds. Time out already. Chris passing finds Brooke Guifre open. Guifre nails the tray from the wing and Marauders have to call another timeout. So as of right now, Dedham as a team have more timeouts used than points. Maybe Dedham realized that stat too though, because out of the break, Abriana Vasquez lofts the outlet pass to Nina Hillman. And Hillman sinks in the fast break layup and get on the board here down 7-2. But try to keep up here as sophomore Nicole Beckett sparks an outstanding 18 nothing run to the rest of this first quarter, starting it with back-to-back -back shots from downtown. Just a matter of seconds. Sit back, relax, and hey, make some popcorn or whatever as you watch it all go down. Dorian Cohen laying down this massive block like a boss. Oh, this is going to be fun. A clearly huge difference in effort is shown right here as Denham doesn't even make an attempt to defend Brooke Guifre's shot here. On the miss, Leo Sperling chases down the rebound and still makes an on-point pass to Kelsey Zaro. Zaro steps up and drains the mid-range J. Kelsey Zaro then gets her own defensive stop. Dorian Cohen regains possession and dishes it ahead to Nicole Beckett on the run. So in these first four and a half minutes of the game, 17-2 is the score. Nicole Beckett's got 10 of them. This team is just plain nasty in transition. Molly Cronin would then put the finishing touches on this fantastic opening quarter, scoring on yet another two points in transition, 25 to two, heading into the second. Marauders just looking for anything positive, opening up this quarter with some much needed points. Nina Hillman buries five of them as Marauders try to chip away at what is already a commanding lead Raiders got going for themselves. Nicole Beckett continues to impress here, laying down her 12th point this half with his solid fast break layup. And this Raider lead has blown up to 25 now, 32-7. Wellesley immediately picks up right where they left off to open up this third. Leo Sperling banks it off glass. And this Dorian Cohen baseline J with under three to go in the quarter puts this game completely out of reach here as the Raiders are crushing Dedham the score of 50-19. With such a dominating lead though, it's also fun to see the Raiders bench get some quality minutes here and contribute as well. CJ Jones right off the bench sinks in this long jumper, closing out the third to give Wellesley their largest lead of the night, 57-22. It's even better though when you get to open up the fourth with fan favorite Izzy Hartnett now in the lineup. Hartnett open for the three, takes it and makes it. And the whole bench goes crazy. Raiders continue to solidify an already impressive roster with consistent contributions from just about anyone in the lineup, causing defensive nightmares for any opponent on any given night. Wellesley here in the end would cruise to their 15th win of this spectacular season as they stay ranked at number seven in the Boston Globe Top 20 and outright clinch Bay State Conference Herga Division title with this 66-35 dominating victory.
Well, it's time now for some Raiders hockey as the girls would face off at Babson for another divisional clash, meeting up once again with the Dedham Marauders. Now, after beating Dedham on the road in a commanding 6-1 victory last month, the Raiders would once again look to jump all over the Marauders' defense. But this time, it looks like the Marauders have been working hard, waiting to fight back since getting dominated on their own home ice. Also not helping, the puck would be on a mission to act up on this night, as weird bounces, crazy hits to the post, and near misses would eventually define the outcome of this game. So as we check in on the action here in the opening period, Alyssa Smino, quick reflex pad save, but the rebound is there for the taking. Sarah Stapleton punches in the putback, and that puts Dedham up for the moment, one nothing. So as we head to the second, a lone goal, the difference in the game so far, Wellesley looking for the equalizer, wastes no time in getting it right here. Samantha Hickey sticks the puck along the boards, but it ricochets backwards instead, right to Mackenzie O'Neill. And O'Neill paints the corner with the wrister, unassisted for the game time score just 31 seconds into the period. And that is a clutch score. Wellesley then causes a turnover in their attacking zone thanks to Phoebe Lawrence. The puck finds its way to Elise Coakley, who flips a floater towards net. Puck deflects off Lawrence, and as slowly as possible, the puck crosses the goal line and in. Phoebe Lawrence with the go-ahead score, and Wellesley leads now 2-1, to one, thanks to these two goals unanswered in the second. So as this battle on the ice continues to be extra chippy, defense is grinding it out here with some nasty hits and extra pushing along the boards. So we finally head to the final frame, Raiders holding on to a one-goal edge, but it's still anyone's game for the taking. So deep in the third with just about two minutes to go in regulation, Wellesley so close to being home free, but Kylie McCarthy's centering pass finds Sarah Stapleton yet again on the doorstep. Scrum in front of the net results in Stapleton sneaking in the equalizer. And that's tough as we are now tied at 2-2. Well, in this game, some credit has to be given defensively to Dedham's goalie Isabella Gentile, as her 22 saves on the night is pretty outstanding. But Gentile has also gotten help, most glaringly by the post. And so the most annoying save of them all comes here under a minute to go. Raiders' outstanding chance. Elise Coakley shoots with a falling down, but hits the pipe by an inch, maybe? Scrum in the crease. I'm wishing my beer beanie turns into actual beer just to handle the stress of a puck that frustratingly will not go in. So the last few seconds ticking away here fast, the focus has to shift to just coming out of this game with a draw. Take the point and move on. But Sarah Stapleton has another plan. Battling in the crease somehow punches in the game-winning dagger with 8.9 seconds left. And it's a gut-wrencher for the Raiders. This team, this defense, is stunned. Dedham comes away with the upset by way of a Sarah Stapleton hat trick the Marauders scored two goals unanswered deep in this final frame, and Wellesley loses this one in a heartbreaking fashion by the final 3-2. So we move on to a special night for boys and girls basketball, as Tuesday night would not only be a Wellesley-Needham doubleheader, but would also be senior night as well for both Raiders teams. Well, you got to imagine it's a different feeling when you get to play your last game as a senior in the regular season. But to do it against your hated rivals, well, that's got to be something else. For the girls, four seniors will be able to experience that special feeling here on this night. They are Izzy Hartnett, Captain Leo Sperling, Natalie Hone, and Captain Dorian Cohen. First quarter opens up both sides of trading baskets back and forth as this jumper, Danielle Rubin Berries, gives Wellesley only a one point edge here, 13 12. But Dorian Cohen gets free in the paint, steps up, and then scores the next four points. So this tight opening quarter does get closed out the right way by Dorian Cohen. His persistence on the offensive boards gets results, and with that putback, Raiders also get back that momentum of 17 12 as we head to the second. And what a quarter we've got here as it helps define the rest of this game. 
showcasing junior captain Kelsey Zarl's ability to just dominate offensively. Wellesley at the moment leading here 2014, but that quickly changes as the next seven unanswered are buried by Kelsey Zarl herself. This solid fast break layup forces Needham to regroup with a timeout called on the floor 27-14. That timeout does nothing to phase Kelsey Zaro, though. And seconds later, Leo Sperling dishes it out to Zaro. And Zaro drains another downtown dinger. And it's 14 points already here for Kelsey Zaro in this first half. But oh wait, Kelsey's not done just yet. As yet another play in transition, Jana Polly ahead to Zaro. Somebody call the fire department, because Kelsey Zaro is on fire. Duran Cohen then drains it from mid-range to again close out a quarter. Wellesley outscored the Rockets 18-4 in the second. Third quarter Raiders keep staying aggressive and on this awesome pass Dorian Cohen airs it out to Izzy Hartnett. Hartnett loses it but Julia Evans saves it from going out of bounds but throws it to Natalie Holm. Cohen in the paint makes a nice fake and banks in her first two points of the game. Kelsey Zaro scoops out the loose ball and is off, beating Danielle Rubin to the basket and lays in the coast-to-coast -coast finish just like that. Have fun trying to come back from this one, Rockets, as they find themselves down big, 41-16. As a player, Dorian Cohen can easily dominate, whether it's low post or high, in the paint or on the boards. We got glimpses of it last year, but this season, Cohen has added the three ball to her arsenal as well, and it's fantastic. Dorian Cohen easily drains this tray like she's the two guard. All I can think is how much more of a nightmare it's going to be for any opponent as Cohen moves to college ball next year. So while Needham cannot find the basket to save their life and keep turning the ball over, Kelsey Zaro just cannot miss either. Zaro on this fast break even goes with a jump hook floater kind of move and that shot even switches home. The lead explodes to 30 now, 46-16. When the Rockets are finally able to get some offensive consistency going, it's in the final quarter, the Raiders stars aren't even on the court, and Wellesley's already in victory mode. Still though, Rockets' Lily Charter comes off the bench and in just a few minutes provides the only spark here for Needham, as they cut it to 55-35. As we stand here in the last few minutes of this final frame, no need to worry about a Rockets epic comeback here, just saying. So the starting five with four seniors in the lineup tonight briefly comes back on the court in these closing minutes. And Leo Sperling finishes up the scoring on this putback before all four seniors would get the last chance in this regular season at home to be called back to the bench. The night now over, this time it's with a well-deserved loud ovation. Needham in those first eight minutes of this game made things a little interesting, but Kelsey Zarl quickly Change that offensively. And Rockets never had a chance after that. Raiders as a team would earn yet another dominating victory, staying unbeaten at home for the regular season. The final would be a convincing one here on senior night. Wellesley 57, Needham 35. So the Raiders opened up this basketball doubleheader the right way with another outstanding win. Now it's time for the boys to do the same. While that may be challenging enough as it is, now the Raiders have to do it without guard Ryan Murray. While his downtown dominance will be greatly missed, can these Raiders as a team keep their postseason hopes alive with a huge upset win over the number one team in the Bay State Conference? Well, before we find out, let's first take a moment to recognize the seven key seniors on this team who each continue to do their part in helping this team be a contender. They are Captain Max Guifre, Paris Sanchez, Captain Will Jackowitz, Dean Simpson, Alvy Stoddard, Captain Jack Wiesel, and Max Wilrich. So with a chance to avenge an earlier loss to Needham at the Good Sports Invitational, well that's solid motivation enough for this Raiders team to fight for an upset. So a little more than half of this opening quarter though would pass before either side actually scored a point. But once both teams got through the cold shooting, he does some pretty special baskets to see early on. Great tray here by senior Dean Simpson is met with loud cheers by the crowd. Then in the corner, Malik Sinclair using his extra playing time tonight to good use. 
draining it from downtown before the buzzer sounds. And so as the first comes to a close, for now the Rockets edge stands at 10-8. With a 16-15 edge to the second quarter though, Colin Blasco adds to that advantage. Top of the key, drains to Trey, the second in this second. Alex Barron then determined in the paint, goes with a turnaround jumper, 21-18 Wellesley. As the minutes inch closer to halftime. Colin Blasco would especially be key tonight, immensely filling in that void left by Murray's absence. Blasco sinks in another from downtown, 30-26, late in the third. Ben Zimmerman brings this insane energy off the bench, and that continues to bring results as he drives in the lane, gets the floor to go despite contact. Wellesley still leads here, 32-28. So, final quarter, that much closer to a Raider upset. While this trade by Captain Jack Lizell definitely helps. Captain Max Wufray off the inbounds, sinks the floater in, and the lead extends to seven the deeper we go into the final frame. Now, Rockets star Thomas Shaughnessy, who has dominated every opponent, including Wellesley the month before, actually has struggled all game here offensively. I don't know, maybe the constant booze from the crowd every time he touches the ball has helped out. But Shaughnessy does drain this key shot from downtown to keep Needham close and cuts it to four. And don't ask me how he then gets his fast break layup to fall. Somehow, Thomas Shaughnessy makes it a two-point game here. Michael Clem then picks it off and goes in for the unassisted layup. That puts Needham back up 38-37 with just under four minutes to go in regulation. But making it a one-point advantage again off Max Guifrey free throws, Colin Blasco open again, takes it, and makes it as the threes are raining down here tonight. 42-38, Raiders. Quickly moving the ball up court here, Owen de Oliveira dishes it to Max Guifrey. Guifrey waits and banks in the clutch points here as 44-38 stands a Raiders lead. Off this Jack Wiesel miss at the charity line, Max Guifrey fights for the rebound for the putback, and if his last shot wasn't the dagger, then this one is for sure. As Wellesley suddenly commands a 50-38 lead. What a response by this team as they held the scoring edge most of the game just to see Needham fight back and take the lead back late in the fourth. But nobody panicked or stopped battling. What an upset over the number one team in this extremely talented Bay State Conference. As Wellesley held Thomas Shaughnessy to only 11 points, and the upset would become official here, Wellesley made good on that revenge win and did it on senior night as well. Final here, Raiders 52, Rockets 41. Before we end these highlights, though, a special shout out to those who may be more behind the scenes in every basketball season, but are every part of the team. To the seniors on that cheerleading squad, the team managers that commit so much time to girls and boys programs, all the way to the finest assistant athletic trainer in the business. Their hard work is always appreciated, never goes unnoticed. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode, but next week the focus will continue to be on the Needham-Wellesley rivalry, this time on the ice. So make sure to check back next week for an all-new episode. In the meantime, Check us out on demand at wellesleymedia.org, our YouTube and Facebook pages, the Wellesley Public Media, and of course right here on Comcast 9, Verizon 39. As always, thanks for watching Black Red Blitz. Go Raiders!